Throughout the centuries, the island of Sri Lanka has had many names. The present name, Sri Lanka, was adopted in 1972. Formally, during British colonial rule, it was known as Ceylon, but it's just one of many names Sri Lanka had in the past. Out of these, the name Taprobane caused quite a stir among historians and cartographers. Taprobane was a name given to Sri Lanka by the ancient Greeks. When Alexander the Great invaded India in 327 BC, Taprobana or Taprobane was described to him by his admirals. One admiral described the smell of cinnamon that came from the island he passed along the way as they were sailing around the southern tip of India. Other writers mentioned Taprobane too. Roman author and naturalist Pliny the Elder wrote a story about a man who got stranded in Taprobana. He writes that the forest of trees grew in the seas that surrounded the island and that its inhabitants hunted elephants, tigers, and turtles with large shells. Pliny also described that the island was inhabited by seapods. Supposedly, these seapods had one large foot, which they used for shade. In 290 BC, Greek explorer and historian Megasthenes also wrote about Taprobana. He mentioned that the island was divided by a river, which some claim may be the Mahabeli River in Sri Lanka. He further stated that one part of the island was filled with wild beasts and elephants, and that the elephants were better for war than those of India. So, how did the word Taprobane or Taprobana originate? In 543 BC, Prince Vijaya, after being exiled from India, came to Sri Lanka with his followers. Shortly after arriving, they noticed that the soil left a strange copper color on their hands and feet. Hence, the island was called Tambarpani, which means copper-colored. Thus, the Greek word taprobane is thought to be an alteration of Tambarpani. Much was said and surmised about taprobane, and it was initially charted in Aristosthenes' map of the world in 194 BC. It shows the island situated south of India, called Taprobane. Aristosthenes also gave dimensions for the island. He wrote that it was 7,000 stadia in length and 5,000 in breadth. He also wrote that there were no cities on the island and that there were only villages, which numbered around 700. Later, this map was adopted by Ptolemy in 150 AD. The most fascinating aspect of this map is that the size of Taprobane is very exaggerated. If this is Sri Lanka, it's nowhere near the original size of the island, which is much smaller. As for the exaggerated size of Taprobane, there are several theories. One is that the size of the island was exaggerated due to its importance. By this time, Sri Lanka was internationally renowned for its trade of spices and elephants. Since Ptolemy compiled the map based on information from merchants, mariners, and travelers, they may have conveyed the importance of the island to him. Hence, Ptolemy made the island larger due to its international reputation. Another theory claims that the island noted as Taprobane in Ptolemy's map may show a part of southern India, possibly the Deccan Plateau. Another theory states that the size of Sri Lanka diminished due to coastal erosion. Hence, some believe that the size of Taprobane in Ptolemy's map may be accurate. But the question is, did Taprobane really reflect Sri Lanka? It's also important to note that Ptolemy never visited Sri Lanka, or Taprobane, personally. He recreated his map solely based on information received from mariners, merchants, missionaries, and other travelers. The often quoted saying by explorer Marco Polo about Sri Lanka being the finest island of its size in the world often leaves out information about its size. In 1293, Marco Polo was on his way back from China when he visited Sri Lanka. He claimed that in the old times, Sri Lanka's size was much greater and that it had a circuit of about 3,600 miles. He further claimed that the north wind had caused the sea to submerge a large part of the island, which is the reason why Sri Lanka is smaller now. Back then, Sri Lanka wasn't the only island known for its commodities. The island of Sumatra was also well known for its spices and elephants. Hence, some assumed that Taprobane was Sumatra and not Sri Lanka. Yet both islands fit the description of an exotic island with golden spices and elephants.
In his treatise, Geography, Ptolemy dedicates one chapter to a thorough description of Taprobane. There he mentions that its inhabitants bind up their long hair like women and that there were 13 tribes or peoples in the island. In addition, he states that the country produces rice, honey, and ginger, while also harboring mines of every sort. As for animals, Ptolemy notes that there were elephants and tigers. More importantly, Ptolemy states that at the time of writing, the island was called Salike and its inhabitants were called Salai. Apart from these additional names, Ptolemy consistently refers to the island as Taprobane. In the 15th century, Italian traveler Niccolo di Conti identified Taprobane as Sumatra. Thus, the controversy over Taprobane's true identity began. The classic 16th century map of Asia by German cartographer Sebastian Munster featured Sri Lanka as Zeylan, which was another name for Sri Lanka in the past. But the name Taprobane was assigned to another island, which is where Sumatra is located today. But coming back to Ptolemy's map, there's evidence that Taprobane is Sri Lanka. For instance, locations noted by Ptolemy, such as Anurograman in the northwest of the island, correlates exactly with modern-day Anuradhapura in Sri Lanka. Ptolemy also notes a river known as Ganges, which could be the Mahabeli River in Sri Lanka. Ptolemy then refers to the central highlands as Malaya, which correlates with the fact that in ancient times, the word Malaya Rata was used to signify the hill country of Sri Lanka. These are just some correlations with modern-day Sri Lanka. It's also important to note that Ptolemy's work was lost to Europe in the Middle Ages. Hence, his work and the term Taprobane fell into oblivion in the West. Then, in the 15th century, his work was rediscovered and became available to scholars in Europe through various editions. Hence, the name Taprobane resurfaced. But by this time, Sri Lanka was known as Ceylon, an earlier variation of Ceylon. European explorers, probably unaware that Taprobane referred to Sri Lanka 12 centuries ago, started looking for Ptolemy's true Taprobane. At the time, the muddied sense of geography was such that, in 1492, even Christopher Columbus thought he was in Taprobane, when he was in fact in Hispanolia, an island in the Caribbean. Considering the strategic position of Sri Lanka in the Indian Ocean, which is centrally located within major maritime routes, and being a chief supplier of spices and elephants in the past, Sri Lanka fits the description for Taprobane. <laughs>